بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters Don't ever let anyone tell you that you're useless Don't ever let anyone tell you that you don't have a chance to earn the mercy of Allah or you're too far away from the Almighty because that statement affects and impacts people negatively and it's not true at all so while I'm so excited to be here in your midst in the beautiful city of Brisbane I decided to start with this beautiful piece of advice to myself and then to yourselves. Every one of us deserves to grow in a positive way, be it connected to the worldly life or your connection with the Almighty that will help you in the hereafter as well. You deserve to grow and there will be growth and there shall be growth. I was a baby at one stage and so were you. And when we were little, if anyone were to tell us, you're never going to grow, in what way? If anyone were to tell us, you're not going to be two years old or three years or four years old, do you know what? Time will defy that statement by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have today been given the age where we're seated here by the will of Allah. Yet, there was a time when we were helplessly with our parents or guardians. In the same way, the growth belongs to Allah. We are facing challenges upon challenges across the globe. To be a Muslim is not so easy. To be a woman who is a Muslim is not so easy. People say, speak about women. I say, leave them alone. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. They hear from the left, they hear from the right, and then they are somewhere in the middle. We have challenges even as men, where people begin to pick on us and our beliefs. So it becomes so difficult to live as an individual that I would like to live and like to be. But I need to keep going. I need to have the principles. I need to understand or try and understand part of the plan of the Almighty because his entire plan may never be understood by you and I. There is a portion of it that would require you to surrender and believe. I believe in the mercy of Allah. I may be going through the most toughest of days today and you might be going through the toughest of days today. You might have heard bad news early morning or in the recent weeks, but I tell you it does not mean that's going to last because it never lasts. Negativity does not last. It will not last. I may have gone through or be going through right now a time unlike any time in my life so far. But I have hope because I'm a believer. I am convinced. I'm convinced that in the same way daybreak follows the darkest hour of the night, the darkest time of my life shall be followed by the brightest light of that daybreak. Be convinced. How many of us have been through days where we really thought we were not going to make it? How many of us have been through times when we felt perhaps we won't find a job or we won't get something suitable or we won't be married and today we're seated here with children? May Allah bless you and your children. There may be from amongst us those who don't have those children. Trust me when I say the Almighty chooses and tailor makes your gifts designed for you knowing what is better for you holistically. So if you don't have one thing, you have to have 10 other things that others don't have. It's just a matter of you taking a moment to focus, to look at how you have been blessed because every single one of us is blessed differently. I have what you may not have. But trust me, you have what I do not have. That's a fact. You know it or you don't. 
Unfortunately, in the material world, success is gauged by how much money you have. And fortunately for a believer, we do know and we are convinced that that's not everything. Because had wealth been directly connected to the pleasure of the Almighty, the wealthiest of the lot would have been none other than Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may peace be upon him. But he went through challenges, he lost in his life, his own children one after the other. Was he not loved by Allah? He was loved more than you and I, more than anyone and everyone. We call him Afdalul Khalqi wa Akramul Rusuli, the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets. That's what we call him, that's what we believe. That being the case, he went through challenges. He went through hardship. People spoke negatively about him. Don't they speak negatively about us? Would that not then be a sign of the love of the Almighty when you face a challenge? I look at it from that particular angle that when the Almighty says, I've created you to test you. When we were young, we used to wonder, what is it all about? But I promise you, as you grow older, you realize from the moment of birth, you are being tested and those tests become meaningful once you hit puberty. And thereafter, you're on your own because now the angels begin to write whatever you say or do or whatever you are worth. Your corrections are beautiful because we have something known as deleting the bad that I may have done in the past. So therefore, don't lose hope. You're never a write-off, never. No matter where you are, what you've done, where you've been in the past, the past is exactly that, it's the past. So Muhammad, peace be upon him, went through challenge upon challenge. They said things about him, wow. They called him a sorcerer. They called him someone who's just after money and power. They said so many nasty things. Some of these nasty things, don't they say about us? Well, I tell you, that is a sign that the Almighty has chosen you to go through this test, similar to that of his most beloved. So don't worry. Take it in your stride, seek the help of the Almighty. I was saying, that the Almighty created us to test us. When we were young, we probably didn't understand what that meant. But as you grow older, my beloved brothers, my sisters, you realize nothing happens according to our liking all the time. It happens according to the design of the Almighty. When Almighty Allah has chosen something for you, many times the path to success starts off with lots of negatives because when man is put into a comfort zone he doesn't grow i come from zimbabwe i see people here who are originally also from zimbabwe people i know and i tell you my brothers and sisters life there is tough but one thing it does it makes you streetwise it makes you able it makes you able to make do with whatever you have. And we say to make a plan, just make a plan. If the electricity goes, for example, people continue speaking like nothing's happened, right? Because they're used to it. Why are you used to it? Because it kept on happening. Whereas if you were to go to a place where that doesn't happen, they'd probably be frightened of the dark. Do you see? Similarly, when there's no water in the tap, no one's upset. They make a plan. When the traffic lights are not working, they make a plan. When there are no jobs, they make a plan. This is just an example, but the reality is that hardship actually strengthens you in a way you did not imagine. Don't look at it as negative in totality. It's only as negative as you'd like it to be. That's what it is. Our sisters, for example, you will have people tell you what to do on both sides, this extreme and the other. You know what the Almighty wants of you. You know your level. What you need to remember is my connection with my maker 
is my own relationship with him. It's got nothing to do with anyone else. I'd better make the most of my days on earth and improve myself as the days pass. On my own, I'd consider good reminders as being decent, as being helpful. But when someone hurls a statement of abuse at you, don't take it to heart. They don't know any better. They don't know your struggles. They don't know what you've been through. They, don't, they haven't walked in your shoes. They don't understand the disasters in your life or the challenges or whatever you might have had to go through in order to become who you are today. They don't know all of that, but that's man. But Allah knows. Man doesn't know how you ended up where you are today. They will judge you. Man is harsh. So I have two things to say about that. Number one, at least the Almighty knows. And your relationship with Him should make you smile. Oh my Lord, I'm struggling, I'm trying, I falter from time to time, I slip and slide from time to time. Forgive me, strengthen me, I know I've got to get to you. I know there's so much that I need to correct with your help, your love, your care for me. I will keep improving as the days pass and I trust you to love me and to guide me, to strengthen me in a way that when I meet you one day, you are pleased with me. Who made you? Allah made you. He knows you personally. He knows your struggles. He knows you're a human. He knows your weaknesses too. He knows how you fall and falter. He knows how you may sin. That should not make you feel for a moment that he's no longer your Lord. That should not make you feel for a moment that you are so distant from him that there is no hope. No, there is hope. There is always hope. But think about it and do something about it. The second thing, I want to address all of us, myself included, to go easy on others. When you see people struggling, don't pass those statements, meaning don't be on the other side of what we were saying today. Because a good statement that comes from your mouth. If it were to encourage someone struggling in their weaknesses, would not only help them, would help you and those around you whom you love. When you belittle others, the Almighty may create a situation where you are belittled at some stage. You mock and jeer, you swear someone, the opposite will be created. At some point, you might face that unless you've been forgiven or you've changed completely. So when you see someone struggle, please pray for them. That would depict the most genuine feeling towards them. If you see someone doing something that you believe should not be done in terms of sin as a believer. If the first thing on your mind is to expose them and to belittle them and to make sure that everyone knows about it, then you need a lot of help, my brother, my sister. Are you genuine enough to understand that we all have weaknesses? We all do. If, we, if it was our business to expose others, we would have been exposed a long time back. But if you immediately ask the Almighty, oh my Lord, here is someone really, perhaps not on the right path, help them and help me too. Whoa. Now you're speaking. This is what we're taught as believers to care for one another in a way that you acknowledge you're also one of the rest of us. That's what it is. I might be standing in front of you on this podium today, but I'm no better than you. I have my own struggles. If I'm standing here, the reminder is for me before it is for you. Because subhanallah, if I don't have the mercy of Allah, I wouldn't ever be able to earn his love. Allah is still most forgiving, most merciful. So that's why I say the two things. Number one, remember the Almighty is by you. He's by your side. He's with you. Don't worry. Keep going. Improve yourself. If you're struggling with your five daily prayers, keep going. The reason is, as you improve, one day you will get there, but push yourself. When people utter a statement that is negative, don't let it make you slide back because that's shaitan. If you have come so close to the Almighty and like I said, you already know and so do I what is required of you as a believer. 
I'm not here to recite what's halal and haram and permissible and prohibited and what's an obligation and what's not and so on. You know that. But I'm here to encourage you to say, my brothers, my sisters, don't give up. Let every day, like I said this afternoon in the Friday prayer, let every day that passes be better than the previous day. Then you're heading in the right direction. And in the process, do not let the statements of others ever discourage you from following what is right. And sometimes those statements are in the form of friends comments or peer pressure or people around us. You know what you're supposed to be doing. Be a proud believer. Be a proud believer. When I say a proud believer, be happy to be who you are. If you have to dress in a certain way, Alhamdulillah, I will do it and I will make a difference. I remember back in the day, we had to grow a beard. And mashallah, I was looking forward to it, but at the same time, a little bit worried about what everyone's going to say because nobody had a beard besides one or two guys at the college I went. And subhanallah, it was not so easy because you're a youngster. You want to have it, but you're fearing what people would say. And then I remember, because I lived with it, people started saying, wow, that's cool, man. That's cool. It suddenly became cool. When I grew a little bit older, a little bit too late, it became a trend, subhanallah, right? Trendy. But back in the day, it was almost taboo to grow a beard. Look how the Almighty changes things. Today you see people from all walks of lives with lovely beards, mashallah. They look at your beard and say, I like your beard, bro. That wouldn't have been the case some time back. That's gonna happen with the hijab as well, by the way. May Allah grant us ease. My beloved sisters, my brothers, don't give up what you believe firmly just because of what people may say, have said, or are saying. Not at all. We're stronger than that. We believe, we're firm. And the Almighty will bless you in so many ways as a result. And not just you, but your children, those around you, your loved ones. And if He has not given you so many family members, He will have granted you something else. Look for it. Try and think, how did the Almighty bless me? Wallahi, I want to share with you something amazing today. It's a verse of the Quran where Allah Almighty says, and I'm sure we've heard it before, but if we haven't, here goes. And if you are going to try to count the favors of Allah, or if you are going to count the favors of Allah, you will never be able to count them all. That's the meaning of the verse. What Allah has blessed you with, you will never be able to count all of those things. If you want to start right now, you're going to have to start with your faculties of hearing and perhaps your sight and whatever else it might be, your organs, your limbs, your bodies, everything, and then you broaden the circle. You will never be able to count the favors of Allah upon you. But I want to tell you what is more amazing than that, the opposite. If Allah has tested you, you are able to count the number of tests in your life. Ha, subhanallah. Isn't that amazing? Ask yourself, what challenges do I have? What negativity do I, do I have? What problems or issues do I face? I swear you would be able to count them on your fingertips. You can say, I've got this problem, this problem, this health matter, this issue at home, this issue at work, this, 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 nine things, I'm done. But what about the billions of things that are a favor of Allah that you cannot count? Man is so weak that he becomes despondent due to nine things that he's challenged in or tested in and he loses track of the millions or the countless things that Allah's blessed him with. That's man. You concentrate on the one negative. It shows your body is fine. Nothing wrong with it. But the mosquitoes bitten you in one place. That itself is the source of depression. Why? That bite is on my nose. The whole world sees it. And I, I need to scratch it every little while. It's so embarrassing. Relax. You're not the first person bitten on your nose, by the way. Mashallah. Looks quite sexy. <laughs> Being bitten on your nose. Mashallah. I hope I'm not bitten tonight. <laughs> my brothers, my sisters, re reality, 
One thing went wrong in my life, two things went wrong, and I'm far from the Almighty. The Almighty says, no man, I actually would like you to get closer to me. That's why there are challenges that you will face, but those challenges are limited. And secondly, he tells us, I will never burden anyone with more than they could actually shoulder. I'll never place on your shoulders more than you can cope and manage, so you can. He wants to push you, he wants to, he wants to ensure that you do your best, you do better than you did the last time. Take a look at the schools that we've all been to, and many of us probably at school right now, don't they push you with a more difficult exam every time you pass one. You get a certificate, and you go to a more difficult stage. You get a certificate, a more difficult stage. So the Almighty tells us when He loves us, He will test us in order for us to gain closeness to Him even more. And when does this end? It doesn't end in this world. This world, the nature of it, is that you will be tested right to the end. So much so, the last portion of your life is looked at as the most difficult portion, especially when you're old and people say now you're old and you're, this, and you're thinking of death and death is supposed to be, according to human standards, one of the most, one of the saddest occasions ever for a person, but a believer knows. That's probably the best day ever. I can't wait to see my Lord who is merciful, kind, forgiving, compassionate, loving. Oh, I can't wait to see him, to meet him. I'm convinced in my heart that the day I meet the one who made me, he is not going to let me down. Whoa. He's not going. How could he let me down? Ah, shaitan will come to you and make you think for a moment. You know what? Look at the sins you did. Look at what you did. My brother, my sister, that's your past. P-A-S-T. That's what it is. It stays there. It will not come with you further. If you seek the forgiveness of the Almighty, it's wiped out. The one who sought forgiveness from a sin is equivalent to the one who didn't sin. Because Islam is based on forgiveness and the mercy of the Almighty. When the Quran starts, or when you want to begin recitation, what do you say? You seek the protection in Allah from shaitan, the devil, the accursed. And then you say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious, the most beneficent, the most forgiving is included in that because it's part of the mercy of the Almighty. Doesn't that show you that the Almighty is most merciful? So we keep going, my brothers, my sisters. We're living in a world where materialism definitely has taken center stage, without a doubt. Everyone is dazzled at times by the lights, the bling bling, mashallah, the latest of everything. We all follow the latest of something, even if it's just mobile phones, but it's still the latest of something. And we all look forward to it. In the interim, the Almighty says, it's not wrong to have from this worldly life what might be to your liking or comfort on condition that you don't lose track of the basics and where you're ultimately heading. If I've worked hard to earn a life so that I can have a house, I need to set aside a little bit so that my house in the hereafter is also set and organized. Mashallah. Right or wrong? People will get a loan and they will start paying for a house and they know it's going to take 20 years, end of it, perhaps I might not live there for too long, but my kids will have a house, right? What about the eternal home? Did you do a little bit? It's not a monetary payment. It's a payment in your worship and your kindness because your character and conduct would actually help you build your hereafter. This afternoon in Salat al Jumu'ah, I read Surah Al Layl. And in Surah Al Layl, Allah Almighty makes mention of the person who will be protected from hellfire, the one who will achieve ease in this world and success in the hereafter. Guess what he says? The ease that he speaks about is given to people with certain qualities. One of them is they give, they spend on others. 
Why? Because he wants you to be selfless and not selfish. When you're selfless, you begin to consider the generations to come, you preserve, you build that which you might not benefit from, but others will. And then it's called a sadaqa jariya, which means a charity that is going to last longer than your life. The benefit of what you did lasted longer than your breathing on earth. So what happened is you continued to clock a reward even after your date of death. It's a sadaqa jariya. What was it? It was your concern for the future. That's what it was. I visited this afternoon a beautiful project, the Brisbane Islamic Center, if I'm not mistaken, a beautiful project. For who? For the future. And mashallah, I was pleasantly surprised to see such concern for the generations to come. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, the reward of this will continue to clock for those who made it happen way beyond their death. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, says, Sadaqa jariya, which is that type of a charity that lasts longer, the benefit of it lasts longer than your life, would continue to benefit you one of the few things after your death. So the concern for the future. Today we are here at this beautiful evening where human appeal and its work is highlighted. Surely we should consider what's going on across the globe. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, tells us that through your struggles, what will help you is when you help others struggling in a similar way. Yeah, subhanallah. Are you struggling? Would you like to see your children succeed? Yes. Well, what concern do you have about the children of others? Good question. If it's only about you and your children, it's going to be tough. But if it's about our children, we're going to succeed. It's going to be made much easier for all of us. Concern for others would definitely prop you up in one way or another. So that's why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, always reminded us, you want the help of Allah? You want the help of your maker, of the Almighty? Well, help others. He says, Allah Almighty will continue to help a servant, a slave, a person, for as long as that person continues to help another. While you're busy helping someone, the Almighty is helping you. In your struggles, I mentioned a few of the struggles, be they religious or be they connected to this worldly life. These are real struggles. People may belittle you because you don't have perhaps materially something they have. They may belittle you, that's their weakness. Don't let it take your smile away from your face. Don't let it hinder your character and conduct. Don't let it make you insult someone or hurt them, abuse them. Not at all. You continue to be kind. You continue to do what you have to. People might say, when is it going to stop? It may not stop. It may continue until the, the day you meet the Almighty. It's fine. He will give you the strength to continue and He will give you pockets of joy and happiness that you would really appreciate. Many of us, for example, we struggle, we go to work, we earn, we pay, we pay bills, we pay fines at times. We pay fees for the children, we pay fees for ourselves and so many other things. And then what happens? In all that struggle, we arrange and plan a little holiday, don't we? So Allah gives you the few weeks, oh, I went out, we had fun, it was so lovely. Wait, come back home. You get back to reality. And what happens then? You go back to work, everything starts again. But did you not have that pocket of goodness? Did you not enjoy a little bit of what Allah has created? Allah says, hang on to see what I've made beyond this world. It's mind boggling. My brothers and sisters, let's rise to the occasion. Never let anyone tell you that you're useless because you're not. You're not. You're amazing. Each one of us is unique. 
Allah loves you. He knows you personally. He knows your challenges. He knows your struggles. He knows your tears. He knows what is going on. He knows the positives, the negatives. He knows more than you know about yourself. And he did not make any one of us useless. And therefore, never tell others that they're useless. Especially the children. Empower them with the most beautiful words because that builds them. When they're one year, two years old, three years, at that age, when you keep reminding them of how beautiful they are, how amazing they are, how intelligent they are, when you hug them, you kiss them, you embrace them, that is taught by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he embraced his grandson, Al-Aqra ibn Habis, says, I have 10, I've never kissed even one of them, how could you? Meaning at that time, they thought being a man was, you couldn't kiss your children. The Prophet, peace be upon him, looked at him and told him, Man la yarham, la yurham. Statement done. Whoever doesn't show mercy will not be shown mercy. Whoa. Look at that. Which means kiss your children, embrace them, give them good words. When they do something wrong, it's normal, it's natural. It's fine. They're kids, they may yell, they may scream, no problem. You're an adult, don't behave like a child, behave like an adult. They're children, let them behave like children. They may break things, they may say things. They may speak out of turn, they may, whatever. They may make huge blunders and mistakes. They may falter in the path or on the path. It's okay, it's fine. We will guide them in a beautiful way. I'm not saying leave it and don't do anything about it, but we will do it in such a beautiful way that we empower them. And I end with an, an example. When the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was faced with a man who entered the masjid, Masjid al-Nabawi, the mosque of the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and all his companions. And he was a Bedouin man, not knowing any better, decided to urinate in the corner of the masjid because he felt like he needed to relieve himself. And he didn't know any better about what he should do and where he should do it because at that particular time, there were, there were no toilets the way we have today. So as he's urinating, the companions became so angry and upset, they began to shout him, yell at him, tell him to stop, scream at him and so on. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, looked at them and told them, La tazmuruhu. Don't scold him in that manner. Leave him. Let him finish his business, whatever he's doing. Sit and think for a moment. If that were to happen today, forget about a mosque here in this hall. <laughs> what would happen? What would happen? I can't even imagine because I don't think it would happen. But kids might do it. It's fine. When this happened, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told his companions, go and get some water. So they got a bucket and they went to look for the water. It took them a little bit of time. And as they were away, he looked at this man and he told him in such, a, in such an empowering way, he says, this is a masjid, it's the house of Allah. It is for the Quran, it is for prayer, it is for dhikr, remembrance of Allah, it is for worship, it's not for urinating. And this man immediately thought about the contrast between those who were about to choke him moments before, and this man who is the prophet himself, so lovingly telling me, hey, don't do this man. It's not supposed to be. He says, Oh Allah, this is the statement in Arabic, right? This, Ar this Bedouin man is saying, Allahumma arhamni warham Muhammadan wa la tarham ma'ana ahadan. Oh Allah, have mercy on me. Have mercy on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but don't have mercy on anyone else. <laughs> now that's a new problem because you need guidance. Hang on, the mercy of Allah encompasses everyone. Look at how the messenger, peace be upon him, waited for them to go away. He didn't yell at this guy while everyone was still there. He waited for them to become busy looking for the water. Subhanallah. Now there is a new problem. What is it? I need to teach this man about the mercy of Allah. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, looks at him and says, 
you are trying to make something narrow that is very broad and all-encompassing. Statement complete. You cannot do that. The mercy of Allah encompasses everything. Allah says, my mercy encompasses absolutely everything. So my brothers, my sisters, as I commenced, I want to tell you the mercy of Allah encompasses you and all your problems and your issues. So keep going and understand you are well within the mercy of Allah. You need to look for it. You need to search for it. You need to feel it. You need to understand it and you need to continue going. Don't let anything distract you from your path. And inshallah, we're all heading in a beautiful direction. Move at your pace for as long as you are moving. Move at your pace, not at the pace of somebody else. For as long as you are moving in the right direction, insha'Allah, you are well within the mercy of Allah. May Allah bless you, bless myself, bless all of us, grant us and our offspring and humanity at large every blessing. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.